Hi there, I'm a learning advisor at James Cook University and I'd love to welcome you to this webinar today around academic writing, it's part three, and we're strategically looking at steps to help you plan the assignment writing process. So it's time to dive straight in and share with you the structure of this webinar. We're going to spend some time connecting and seeing how confident and competent you feel with planning out your assignment, whether it's the first assignment that you have at university or whether it is one that you are doing a little further down the track. We're going to look at what successful students do and say, uh, as well as a practical writing strategy and planning strategies for you. We're going to look at, uh, or listen to rather, student voices. What are the most frequently asked questions and tips from real students? And it'll be then over to you to take action and think about what you'll do as a result of being a part of this webinar. So the very first thing I would like to share with you is where you can download any of the resources that I will be sharing with you today. Here is the direct link, the writing guide. Uh, you can go directly to the JCU webpage, the library tab at the top right hand side and open it up to the guides and type in writing there and find this amazing guide with all the steps to work through to support you as you submit and really do well on your assignments and assessment tasks. So planning your assignment, how do you actually go about doing that and what are some powerful strategies that will save you time uh, and not stress you out too much? Well, successful students do a number of things. and You may have already noticed that uh, students who do well develop this really strong sense of self-confidence in academia and they invest time on tasks. So they put in the time and the effort and do the work and are active learners so are actively engaged in doing things like taking critical notes, unpacking essay questions and planning out the assignment. So knowing that these are the qualities of successful students, how might it help you in this webinar? Well, knowing that these qualities shape success, uh, this webinar is really designed to help you structure and organise your very first academic assignment or if you've been out of study for a while, you might be just needing a bit of a refresh of what are the practical steps to work through. We're going to also look at some uh, real assignment student samples in this session and uh, look at the patterns and moves that are operating. So, moving on. One of the first things successful students do is that they actually create a semester long assessment plan or study plan. And from the Learning Centre website, you can download lots of different templates to help you with this. This is one example of a schedule that um, is a study study planner. You can see that all of the weeks of the semester are down the left hand side. The days of the week are across the top. But what is really interesting with this planner is that um, this student is um, taking four subjects and they're individually coloured and each assessment item is mapped from the very last piece of assessment to the very first piece of assessment. And successful students really have a clear sense of where they're going and what needs to be done each week to meet the deadlines. So, Download one of the templates and have a go at putting together your very own assessment planner. It will give you a very clear focus and direction of what's coming for you every single week. Something else that successful students do is work through an assessment process. The first thing that we have covered in this webinar series is understanding or unpacking the essay question. And that's the first step of a successful student, submitting an assignment by the due date and hopefully getting a really good mark. The second part of that process is getting together all of the research, the scholarly articles and the reviews and looking through uh, the weekly lecture material and notes as well as weekly readings to compile information and sources that may be relevant to the task at hand. And then it's really setting it about a plan. What's the structure? What's the genre? What are the features that you'll need to include? And once you have all of those elements together, it's about creating a first draft, structuring the paragraph, starting to think about the evidence and where it will be integrated. And a lot of time in this 
writing process is around reflection, wondering and making decisions of whether the paragraphs are in the correct order, whether you have actually included evidence that supports and reinforces your thesis statement or position, and whether or not you've got a clear introduction, conclusion, body paragraphs that follow the flow of a good academic paragraph. So, that seems like a pretty big process, but following it and knowing the process is the first step. Obviously, once you've reflected and rearranged, you're working backwards and forwards through a drafting process, redrafting, refining, editing at a sentence level, a paragraph level, and a whole text level, ready to submit your assignment by the due date. So, there is a strategy besides unpacking the essay question that can help you create a direction for your assignment. It's a simple technique and it's actually quite a lot of fun. Uh, before you dive into the databases or come up with a very fixed response or answer to the essay question or topic, the 100 question technique is definitely worth giving a go. Basically, this strategy is thinking up 100 questions about your question without answering the question. It can really give you great direction for the research angle or help you establish a thesis, which is your position on the topic or the assignment that you have to complete. It's a really useful tool to help you expand your knowledge on a topic and consider all of the aspects, factors and implications. Before you dive in, have a go. Even if you don't get to 100 questions, you might like to actually stop this video now and grab out your assignment topic or question and sit with some blank paper or note, one of your notebooks and write out 100 questions about that question. And something that really successful students do with this strategy is after all of those questions are laid out, group them together into categories. This will help you identify whether it's a cause or effect factors, implications, historical or social or uh, political or economic construct or grouping. Perhaps it's a background uh, theory or ideas or historical lens through which you are looking and viewing the work. This will help you really make sense of all of the parts of your assignment. So stop the video, pull out your assignment and your topic and have a go at generating 100 questions. Do it in a study group and have lots of fun sharing your responses and really um, starting to unpack the depth and the angle of your topic. Well, welcome back. Hopefully you've had a go at the 100 question technique and it's a brilliant strategy as a starting point after you've unpacked your essay question, but you can also also ask additional questions of uh, the task at hand. You can think about the theories, the key theories covered in class that connect with the topic. You might look at some of the journal articles or book chapters or web pages that may fit with um, this topic and you might even dig up or, or explore controversy or major disagreements around your topic. Great focus questions to continue on with. So once you've actually got a sense of what the task is asking and you've created maybe a bit of a mud map or a visual diagram of all of the ingredients, it could be through a concept map or it might be laying down some words and key aspects or the structure of your assignment, um, it's important to think about all of the ingredients that you need to include. Now what I have here to share with you is a critical note-taking uh, guideline. Basically, the Learning Centre has put together descriptions and ingredient banks for all of the different types of assignments that you may be asked to create uh, at university. And one of them is the Critical Essay Planner. Now, without even having to read all of the text there, I want you to know uh, that you can download one of these templates from the Writing Lib Guide uh, as well as the Learning Centre webpage. But just to really walk you through how to use this or why it might be important is that the structure of the essay is broken into three parts, an introduction, a body and a conclusion. And in this guideline, if you follow all of the subcategories and parts, you will have a really clear indication of all the things that you need to include. For example, in a critical essay, it opens in a very general way. It starts with a sentence that attracts the reader's attention 
and gradually moves in a funnel-like shape to uh, a thesis statement, which is your position and the direction that the essay will cover. So looking at this template, it's a great idea to have a look at what structure you're going to put together for your very own assignment. And this is a great guide. <coughs> Excuse me. There is also a great resource called the Big Fake Essay, downloadable and accessible from this sample, but I've already uh, taken some time to put together a few slides to show you what this Big Fake Essay is all about. Some librarians and learning advisors got together to show students what a good essay looks like and unpack the patterns and moves through pop-up comments and real lecturer comments as well. From the writing angle to the referencing list and everything in between. So when you go to that link, you will find um, the big fake essay laid out in paragraphs, but as you hover over the text, you will see pop-up comments that are telling you what's happening and the really successful things that the student has created in that writing example. So you will also see <clears throat> that it includes a number of the elements that we've just seen in the guideline for writing. So a clear introduction, body paragraphs with evidence, and also um, a conclusion. Uh, which isn't here in this sample, but as you look at that big fake essay and come back to the guideline, you will find all of the necessary ingredients, the parts that make up a really well-formed essay. And when you're planning your own assignment, it is worth looking at real live models and samples. The Learning Centre has a number of those and you can find more by visiting the Learning Centre uh, webpage or the Writing LibGuide as well, as well as subject-specific LibGuides. There are quite a number across the university that have embedded real students' uh, samples to help more students learn. Definitely check them out. So where to from here? Well, there's the conclusion that I mentioned a little earlier, and also the Big Fake Essay has a reference list, and you can have a look at how they've laid out different sources like journal articles, book chapters, and websites even. So let's go now to Students' Voice. Some top tips around planning the assignment from real students. Now, it would be remiss of me to not address the 100 question technique. Every time I share or teach the 100 question technique, I get overwhelming feedback from students saying, I've tried it out, it really works, I feel clearer, I'm not going around in circles on how to start this assignment. Real tips from students also include this idea of giving yourself enough time using the templates and planners to backward map your assignment steps and stages to really work out how much time you'll need for that drafting stage in the week or two before it's due, how much time you'll need for the writing process, the researching process, and even unpacking the essay question. And one of the biggest tips is not to actually break up your study blocks too differently. So, you know, on one day, work on one whole subject. On the next day, work on another because your brain will be able to store and retrieve that information under stressful or time-sensitive um, conditions. So be kind to yourself in this whole process. So let's learn together. I'm going to flip to the chat window and have a look at some of the questions that are coming through based on planning the assignment. I've never um, studied at university. I have no idea on how to plan the assignment. This is a familiar comment from a lot of students. And I'm going to reiterate, use some of the strategies in this video and webinar today, but don't forget some of the powerful resources available to you. I'll talk about a few in a moment, but one I want to mention right now is the Learning Centre resources, the online resources, uh, the LibGuides, definitely go there. But also too, don't forget that you can uh, drop into the Learning Desk on the ground floor of the libraries to um, have a short consult with a peer advisor who is someone studying at James Cook University and is a really successful model and sample student. You can make an appointment with a learning advisor and there are many other strategies to support you too. So let's have a little look at some of those. <clears throat> 
very shortly. But I want you just to check in. We've explored the 100 question technique today and looked at different templates for planning out your assessment planner and map and looked at a critical um, planner or template for writing a critical essay and looked at very briefly uh, where you can locate some samples of what good writing looks like. So successful students are informed, they know the structure and the elements that they need to include and they set about carving out time to make and meet the deadlines. So just from our discussion today and this webinar, I want you to take a moment to reflect and think about how confident you are at planning planning your assignment now with some of the tips in this webinar. And I'd really like you to think about what's one thing, just one thing from this video that you will implement uh, to help you plan out your assignment more successfully. And getting back to additional support, I've talked about uh, a learning advice consult and the learning advice desk, but I haven't talked too much in this webinar about our Facebook page. You can simply go to Facebook, it's JCU Learning Centre, and stay up to date with great workshops and tips to keep you inspired, energised, and really moving towards that success that you are after. Successful students stay connected throughout their degree, regardless of what issue or challenge is before them. And one tool that can help you after hours is Studiosity. You can access Studiosity from your Learn site in the tools down the left hand side of your Learn JCU sites, <coughs> subject sites. Now, Studiosity is a great starting point. Obviously, it's for after hours, but you can use it 24-7, really. And you can use it up to eight times across the semester. And you can get live feedback. And you can also submit your assignment and get some feedback on the mechanics, the writing, the layout of it. So definitely check out all of these resources. I hope you found something useful in this webinar. And I look forward to sharing with you the next part in the series. In this series so far, we've looked at uh, great strategies for success around unpacking the essay question, critical note taking, and planning the assignment. And what's coming up next is how we integrate evidence from scholarly sources into our assignments. And that's through things like paraphrasing, using direct quotes and summarising. And I'm going to be showing you and exploring the definitions behind these key strategies in the next webinar. I look forward to joining uh, you joining me in the next video.